This question, it says that there's a lizard. And this lizard, right, if you look at the picture here, the hind leg, right, the length of the hind leg will determine uh, the size of the, of the perch diameter. Perch means they are sitting on or resting on the tree branches, right? So they have to actually move around uh, on the tree branches. So therefore, they're talking about the variation uh, in the hind leg length between different lizards of the same species. You know, this is called the variation in the population. So variation in the hind leg length. So different leg length will be able to perch on different diameter of the branch. Okay, so longer leg length will perch on a long, a bigger diameter and smaller leg length can perch on smaller diameter. Okay, so that's the variation that they introduced to you. So the question here, so they say that, okay, so now what happened is that um, a, a natural disaster has happened in a group of islands that killed a lot of these uh, lizards in other islands. So what the scientists did is that the scientists went to one island, which is actually called the source population, went to one island, and then from the island, the scientists actually randomly uh, catch those lizards from this source population in one particular island. And then from this group of uh, lizards, the scientists take one male and one female and place it to um, seven other islands. So for every other island, the scientists put a pair of lizards, one male and one female, for each of the seven islands. So all together got seven pairs. Okay. I hope I'm saying correctly, seven pairs. Huh? I think seven pairs is what I read. Okay. So, so you can see, you can see very clearly that the trees found on the original island where your lizards come from, they are huge, the branches are big. Whereas for the seven islands, which are called the experimental founder islands, uh, the tree branches are smaller, the diameter are smaller. So you see that what happened is that the majority of the lizards from the source population might not be able to survive one, okay? Unless there are variations there, then you see that among the variations, the lizards with a smaller leg length will be selected to survive in the experimental founder islands. Can you see they use the word founder? So with that, I'm going to introduce to you that you have learned three ways that the population genotype, phenotype can change. Remember, one is natural selection. Two is um, artificial selection. And three is the founder effect, as well as bottleneck effect. So these three are the three ways that can lead to a change in the phenotype, genotype, and gene pool of the population. So here is talking about founder effect. Okay, so you have learned founder effect here. Right, founder effect. So founder effect is you start from an original population here, your original population, and then a small group of individuals from the original population has been shifted away from the original population. And therefore they, they now form a new population in a new place. And why is it they have shifted away or drifted away is because of maybe natural catastrophe. There is a flood that that um, that um, separate them or carry them away, or there's a forest fire that separate them, or they run away from the forest fire. They run away from the flood, so they become separated from original parental population. So this small group wanders away, or they could be wandered away by chance, and they become separated or swept away by hurricane and tsunami. So usually it's a certain critical event that causes them to be drifted away from original population. So now they become new population. So because of that, the variation in this new population could be different from the original parental population 
because it is a small population. It's only a small group, so it may not contain all the different kind of variations you can find in the parental population because it's a small group. Okay, so this is for the founder effect. Bottleneck effect is slightly different, even though the, the, the outcome is the same. Bottleneck effect is the original population a lot of them die because of natural catastrophe. Whatever that is left and survive, bottleneck means you are facing, you know, bottleneck is like um, traffic jam, right? When you pass through the traffic jam, you've got a lot of difficulty. So only a minority survive, right? So whatever population that are left is a very small. So the size is reduced. So this small number, will not be exactly the same as the original parental population in terms of the variation in phenotype. Okay, so therefore it's a different one. So this question is talking about this genetic drift, right? Slight change in, in gene pool and phenotype due to founder effect. The question is talking about founder effect. Okay, right, uh, hang on. Recording, huh? Okay, predict the effect of natural selection on the mean hind limb leg length of the um, lizard on the seven experimental founder islands. So that means now we have placed the groups of the original uh, group of lizards into seven different islands. So they are subjected to the natural selection in each of the seven islands separately. So what is the effect of this natural selection? So you know that, uh, what you mean by natural selection? Okay, natural selection is you got the original population, okay, the population in that place. And then remember the, the formula they've taught you. And this, net, this population is subjected to selection prep, selection pressure from the surrounding environment. So now they are placed in these seven islands. So each of the island got their own environmental factor. So remember when you say selection pressure are all the factors that can affect survival of these individuals of this population. So you name it, right? Selection pressure could be, you're talking about the lizards now. So what are the things that can affect the lizard survival? You can, at climate, it can be temperature, too hot, too cold, okay? Uh, availability of water, okay? Uh, what about the diseases? Right, diseases that can cause the death. What about uh, inter-specific and intra-specific competition? So competition for what? What they need to survive. So they compete for what? Compete for food, compete for shelter, compete for mate. Compete for mate is only intra-specific, huh? not inter-specific. Okay, so these are all the possible selection pressure for lizards. So when you place them in a different um, islands, they will be subjected to different selection pressure. And we know that uh, for this particular question, they only show you one, one thing about one selection pressure there, which is actually the, the tree. The tree branches are, has got smaller diameter. So therefore, um, the smaller diameter, so the selection pressure here, okay, the se selection, selection pressure, in the seven islands, right? The seven, uh, they call it founder islands. Uh, okay, founder islands, not the original. Founder islands have got small, okay? Is the, the branches, branches with smaller diameter. So this is actually the selection pressure. So therefore, because of that, you will, you will select which lizard to survive. So I already taught you the, the format of natural selection, when you want to discuss about it, you divide the population into two groups, right? The first group is the population with a favorable phenotype, genotype, and um, allele, right? So the first group here, which is this group, uh, give me the drawing. So this group here, okay, is a group with favorable, phenotype, therefore having favorable genotype, therefore having favorable allele, allele, right? So what is the favorable phenotype here? So because the branches are small, 
what is a favorable phenotype for them to survive? Of course, is the shorter, right? Shorter hind limb, okay? Um, lizards, okay, lizards with shorter hind limb will be, have a selective advantage. Selective advantage. So, selective advantage is a key word. Right, they are selected for survival means you've got selective advantage. So please learn up this word so you can use this word to describe. Shorter hind limb visits will have got selective advantage. So um, what is the effect? So therefore, when they're selected for survival, there will be a change in gene pool, right? So the change in gene pool, so it will so. I already taught you that because of that, right? Lizards with shorter hind limb leg will keyword survive. Okay, therefore they reproduce all these other keywords. So they pass on their favorable value. Okay, pass on the favorable value to the offsprings. So this is what you have learned, right? So because of that, what happened to the population? There'll be a change. So there'll be an increase in the favorable LU frequency. So favorable LU frequency here means uh, frequency of the LU for shorter hind limb length, shorter hind limb. So increase in favorable LU. Therefore, uh, there'll be a change in gene pool gene pool changes. So overall, what can you see in the phenotype of the population is there'll be uh, more lizards with shorter hind limb. Okay. So therefore here I am actually describing with very crystal clear understanding of this format to explain to describe natural selection. Remember, this is the formula that I've given to you to describe all sorts of natural selection. So you want to apply this formula to answer all the questions which ask you about natural selection. So this is how you apply to it. Even though it's a one mark question, I'm explaining to you so that you can come with crystal clear understanding. So that if it's a four or five marks question, you can get all the full marks for this one. Okay. So next, we're going to discuss the next question, part two. Predict how collecting individuals at random for the seven founding pairs affects the mean hind limb length of the lizard on different islands. So they went to original population, right? Oh, sorry, the original island. They choose one of the island and they randomly uh, collect individuals. It's like you put the trap in different areas. Remember the pitfall traps? So they could have uh, catch them by pitfall traps, okay? Remember pitfall traps? You, you dig the hole there and then you let them fall into the hole. Okay, you put some, some baits there. So they could have caught the, the, the lizards in this way. So when you randomly choose them, you choose it randomly so that you can catch all sorts of genetic variation and phenotype, right? So here, it comes to the understanding that when you do random sampling, it's because you want to sample all the different kind of, okay, biodiversity. I'm mean, coming to an overlapping topic already. Remember, you learned that biodiversity got three levels of biodiversity, right? So the first level is ecosystem diversity. And then the second one is genetic diversity. Diversity, diversity. And the third one is what? Species diversity, species, species diversity. Okay, so when you do random sampling, so in this case, I'm sure they also do random catching. It's similar to random sampling. It means you put uh, your pitfalls in different locations and you might have selected, selected it randomly. So therefore, you will be able to cover the biodiversity of that area. So that means to say you can achieve 
ecosystem diversity, it means where you put the trap has covered all sorts of habitat in that area. You will also achieve genetic diversity. Uh, correct, yes, yes. Genetic diversity means you will catch all sorts of species that can move and can fall into the trap. All sorts of species. So genetic diversity here involves um, species, richness, remember, and species evenness. So there are two criteria, right? Okay, so all sorts of species and species evenness. Then the third one is species diversity. Species diversity means we will be able to capture all sorts of genetic diversity of the same species. So we are catching genetic diversity of the same species here. That's why it's called species diversity. Is it species diversity? Sorry, I don't think. Yes, I think it's species diversity. Am I? <clears throat> I think I mix up the name, uh, okay? Sorry. I mix up the name already, okay? This is, number two is species diversity, correct? Okay, number three is actually genetic, genetic diversity. Genetic diversity, okay? So genetic diversity is uh, talking about the genetic diversity of the same species. So here, because you have collected the sample randomly, that means you, your sample already covered these three criteria of biodiversity. So it also includes genetic diversity. So therefore, you're going to cover all sorts, all sorts of hind leg length, the variation in the hind leg length of this species. So therefore, the answer here is, how does it affect the mean hind leg length? So it will vary. So that means in different um, different um, area that you sample, you get different hind leg length. So the hind leg length that you catch will vary. So this is the understanding that come with you when you answer the question, you come with crystal clear understanding. It's not only superficial. So you need to be able to connect what you have learned to achieve crystal clear understanding. As you do the question, if you do like this, you'll find that um, you will do very well in biology. Biology becomes very easy because when you do the question, you start to connect all the different topics that you have learned together and your understanding becomes very thorough instead of just superficial. So you want to achieve that when you do your passive questions. It's not about, uh, I'm trying to cover as many questions as possible. If you touch and go, right, uh, and you don't understand in depth, then you it's still not complete. You want to understand in this way as I've explained to you. Then your understanding becomes quite, quite deep and quite thorough. That's called um, mastery of the subject, okay? Um, how did I do that? I don't know. My brain has linked everything together. It just comes naturally, okay? So how do you do that? You have to know your basic very well. That's why I said you must learn your basic very well then you're able to link them because you already know them. You know that this is related, you retrieve it, you link them already. So you need to learn up your basic. Okay, it's not about doing as many passes as possible be before you even learn your basic. You must know your basic well. Or you can do your questions and using the questions to help you to go back to, the, to your textbook and to your notes and learn them also can. But the only thing is that past year may not cover all the topics. You still have to go back to your notes and see which are the topics you have not covered to cover all of them. You need to cover all of them. Don't miss any one of them, okay? Okay, in this question, many generations of the lizards were produced over the four years after the introduction of the founding pair. So you have introduced to the seven islands of four years already. So they actually um, trace and capture and count them and find out the genetic variation, the changes in the hind leg over the period of four years. And they plot the data in the graph here. Okay. Okay. Uh, island, uh, source island is the one here. There's no change because uh, no changes in environmental factor. But if you look at the rest of the island, you can see that all of them 
the mean hind limb length has actually dropped with the number of years they are found in the island because of the selection pressure from the island itself, which only provide three branches with smaller diameter. And therefore, this selection pressure, only the favorable phenotype becomes the shorter uh, hind limb will be selected. Therefore, the hind limb length will drop with the number of years, showing you directional selection. Remember, di directional selection. You know, selection got three possible pattern, right? From the original um, phenotype variation, in the end, it is still like this. No change is called stabilizing selection. Or from original, it becomes like this. This is called directional selection or it becomes like this, this is called disruptive selection, right? In this case here, from original, which is maybe average hind length, now it has shifted to the right side because now it's a, oh, sorry, it shifted to the left side. Huh? It's a shorter limb length, okay? Shorter limb length means it has shifted this way, okay? In the optimum phenotype, hind leg has become shorter. So it's a directional selection, okay? So let's see what, what a question is trying to ask you here. With a reference to the figure 5.2 and 5.3, describe and suggest explanations for the results for the island. So two keyword, describe, remember? Describe means describe the, the graph that's given to you, right? The general pattern as well as the differences between individual islands, right? General pattern. So tell me about the general pattern for the source island, in the source island, as well as the founder island. Okay, general pattern. What happened to the hind leg length? Okay, so for the source so you can talk about general pattern and then of course you want to quote figures as well because this quite needs to quote the figures, right? Then suggest explanation means to explain why, why is it happening this way. So these are the uh, three key things you want to write to score the marks. Then you check what is the total marks here. Five marks. Five marks means you need to write five points that are correct to score. Okay. So, uh, so talk about general pattern first. Talk about source island. Okay, I write here, okay? So in the source island, what do we see? In the source island, you can see there's no change, isn't it? You can see that the hind limb leg here, there is no change. Whereas in the rest of the seven island, the hind limb leg actually has dropped. It has dropped. It's coming down, okay? Whereas for the source island, it is still like, it's the same. So this is the pattern that you want to um, explain. Okay. So let's talk about Sauce Island first. Start from Sauce Island. Sauce Island. Um, describe, right? Describe what you see from the graph. So hind limb length remain the same. So the phenotype, which is hind limb length, remain the same, okay? So explain. This is a stable, stabilizing selection. So natural, natural selection happens all the time, right? Natural selection happens all the time because all organisms are exposed to the environment, therefore exposed to selection pressure all the time. So tell me what kind of pattern of selection there is, stabilizing, okay? Versus the uh, founder islands. So what you can see in founder islands is that the hind limb length actually decreased, decreased. So therefore also select natural selection, this is a directional, selection. Okay, so all together you've got four marks already here. Four out of five marks already, you know. 
Okay, so one more mark is for explain. So there are many things you can explain here. So in the founder island, right? That's what you want to explain. In the founder island, the selection pressure is the branches with smaller diameter. So therefore, hind limbs Uh, shorter hind limbs, okay? Shorter hind limbs have selective advantage. Okay, you can write selective advantage or they are selected for. So these two terms you can use, either selective advantage or selected for. Both are acceptable in exam as the keyword. So selected for survival, okay? So, therefore, individual, individual with shorter hind limbs, limbs will survive. So, you just give the formula that I've given to you to describe natural selection. Survive and then reproduce. Huh? Survive and reproduce. survive and reproduce or they pass on the favorable allele. Favorable allele, which is actually the short hind limb alleles uh, to the offsprings. Okay, so the short hind limb alleles value frequency increases. So can you see the formula to describe natural selection? This is the formula I've shown you. So you will write all these, these are the marking points. You will get the marks, okay? All right. Um, so I think I will stop here for today's discussion.